Notice the Russia. Just train. Woo! Notice the Russia story simmered down a little bit, right? Why? Because you got you got 2018 World Cup in Russia. <laughs> oh man, everybody's partying in Moscow in Russia, kicking the ball. Kick. Right? So you can't blame Russia. All the corporate media, all the all the all the corporations, multinational corporations sponsoring the 2018 World Cup. Soccer in Russia. Ooh, I was watching it. I was watching it yesterday. It was a good, good, great. <clears throat> right, everybody having fun. Where's the Russia scare? Why? I thought they were the enemy. I thought, what? Oh, they hacked the election. They hacked the U.S. election. You go over there and you kick the ball. Such bullshit. Right? Uh, the other thing I, I want to say is the the the, uh, the, the clip on um, Obama talking about the. Sending the children back to Mexico, right? When you think about it, right, the border issue with uh, children crossing the border, abandoned children. I'll just make it brief because it's a stupid story. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's a distraction from what's going on in Congress where the, uh, the, the, these, the congressman is supposed to be, supposed to be looking into the Clinton Foundation corruption, Clinton corruption, the email corruption, the FBI corruption, but instead they're flipping it to this border story. So in finality, when you really think about it, Trump's policy of not sending children back to a place that they arguably escaped rather than rather holding them separately from the parents that just abandoned them and pushed them across the border is actually a more humane policy. Watch Obama. I put the clip up this morning. Watch Obama in his own words say that he would he they want to send the kids back. You send a, a ten year old unaccompanied kid back to a to a, a foreign country where his parents are are detained. <laughs> so Trump's policy of detaining detaining illegals as they come in, even if they're children, is actually far more humane than just sending people back into hostile territory but uh, I always said I mean I again I come from the school of getting ripped off in 2016 supporting the Sanders movement and I was never a fan of Trump I didn't vote for Trump I still wouldn't vote for Trump but the, the fact is and I'll tell you why the Democrats if you were if you're if you're have been paying attention long enough 2016 you will know that the Democrats would rather have lost to Trump. We always said it. The Democrats would rather have lost to Trump than win with Bernie Sanders. Why? Because if they lose to Bernie Sanders, they don't have a job. They're out of power. Bernie Sanders and the, the 40 million young people that stood up and fought would are wide awake. Corporate America is the villain. But... When they, when they lose with Trump, they don't really lose because the corporations that sponsor the, the po politicians, nothing changes with Trump. Why? Because Trump still believes in a failed economic policy of trickle-down economics that Alan Greenspan has said openly. You can search the YouTubes. Uh, the guy Alan Greenspan has said openly that Reaganomics and trickle-down economics and, you know, these types of uh, failed economic policies don't work. Greenspan said it. He said that, that we miss, we underestimated the greed of corporations, that we, we assumed that corporations, once given tax breaks and given every opportunity to succeed, that they would reciprocate. And he said we were wrong. They don't, they won't do it. So with, with Trump, you get a little bit, a little bit less hawkish. He's not gonna, I mean, the thing with North Korea, he's not, he, he's showing that he, he'd rather go shake a hand and, and bargain than drop a bomb. Which is a move in the right direction, which is he's, he's better on foreign policy in terms of anti-war. But he's still an absolute buffoon, an idiot in terms of economic policy. Or he's just faking it. He knows, he knows that when you give tax breaks to the corporations, that's just more money in their pocket. 
the divide between rich and poor widens. Income and wealth inequality takes a leap forward. So, so the Democrats would still rather lose with lose to Trump again than win with Sanders. Because if Sanders surges in 2020, if he shows signs of surging, you'll see it. They, they, they're going to, they, you know, the, 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 uh, the election fraud is still in place. Nothing has changed. They're doing, the, that's the biggest story right now. The biggest story is what's going on in Congress where these joint session committees, whatever the fuck they are, right? They, they're, they're supposed to be, they're supposed to be dissecting the Clinton corruption, the email scam, the quid pro quo, the, the, how, how information is, is, uh, is being circumvented and sold out the back door to hostile nations like Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and whoever. Wall Street, whoever buys it, any corporation that wants to buy information, get some inside information, make some cash in the stock market, get a good position, you just, that's it. You, you side with, the, you side with the politicians. You, you put a little money in their, in their accounts and bow, you get, you, you get, your, you get your favor. It's all good, man. So, so anyway, sorry if the, the, uh, the, the title was a little misleading, but the lunatic left, I mean, they they can't they, if they what happened? They can't blame Russia now. Russia, look, look how Russia's looking good. It's still, <laughs> nice. Everybody's safe, clean. Ah, kicking the ball out in in, in uh, Moscow. I guess it wasn't Russia after all. My name is Marcus Conti, investigative journalist, reporter here on YouTube, and candidate for the United States Senate. Peace.